beautiful souls and welcome back to another episode of Channel Your Light on Your Intuitive with myself, Erin Chandler. It is an absolute privilege to be here on the earth plane with all of you at the same time. There has been so many messages coming through. I am specifically coming on here to share one that has come through for a lot of people specifically divine feminines but this is also relevant for the divine masculines watching this because it is not about a gender specific rather it is about an energy for as all of you know we all hold divine masculine and the divine feminine within each and every one of us it is the balance of the yin and yang within so without further ado, I wish to share these messages. They are deeply uh, resonating with the uh, root base of the spirit of the soul, why we are here, what we have been through and why we have been through it. So I wish to begin with this. Each and every one of you on your journeys have a frequency that you were recruited for this frequency that you hold. You did not come here to live this being unicorns and rainbows. You are part of a group of subsets of souls that chose to come here and were asked to choose to come here. There is a distinction and a difference. You were asked to come here and you chose to agree to this because you needed to be in places where there are imbalances, when there are low dense frequencies, we need a higher frequency to tread in that consciousness and in that experience of energy in order to lighten it, transmute it. We need those who are of compassion to be in the places where there is no compassion. We need you in those places. As this holder of frequency, whether it is balance, compassion, light, love, all of those different things, and being told your frequency was required to be down in the depths where the frequency was much lower. If you are wondering why your journey was the way that it was, where is light needed the most in the darkness? Where do we need compassion the most in the places where there is none? Where do we need balance the most in the places where there is significant imbalances? If you are justice, where do we need justice the most in the places where there is the most injustices? All of your experiences, somebody on here, I'm hearing, uh, let me bring a wrecking ball. All of the experience you've had, for example, justice, you have been in the places of injustices, not because you are continually recalling that experience. You were recruited to be in the places where there was multiple injustices in order to write the balance or the frequencies or to bring, I'm hearing the song, Kama 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 Chameleon. That's a song that's playing with that. And you'll notice chameleon is very important because it's like at this, oh, I'm hearing a lot of Sanskrit. That's so fascinating. If the wheel of karma is turning, let not you be on the outskirts of each individual section and house. Rather, be in the center, the one who turns the wheel, rather than the one who gets turned by the wheel. You have all been bringing your frequencies down here. This is not the first time I have said this, but I wish to put it in a, another perspective. Ava says, Mom, let me. All of you that are love, you will wonder why you have been to so many places where there is such a lack of love. It is because you are love. Do you think that you would come and be given anything you could not hold? Do you think you would be placed in places of darkness that you could not illuminate it with a light so bright? Let the tables turn, dear heart. Let the illuminations of all that has been come to a point of transcendence, moving from the triad into the cube, and then we move further and further out. 
It is taking that which you have been in and understanding you can release the pain because you were not there as a point of pain. You came there because you are the balancer of the imbalances. You came here at the Shura. I hear the grandmothers. It is important that the ancestors speak at this time on the earth plane as we move into the solars and the meteors, as we have transcended the four illuminations of the super moons. Shura. The ancestors wish to speak. You know not, dear heart, that every lifetime up until this moment here, we have been carefully planning and dictating, utilizing the darkest energies to bring forth the most beautiful light, a lotus flower fruit. So I'm getting the lotus flower again. Do you not know that I, your mother, and I, your grandmother, and your great-great-grandmother, and your great-great-great-grandmother, we have all set the stage. Every step must have been the way that it was, the lives that we lived, the things we overcame, and the things that we did not, and the deepness of our souls reverberating through you in this very moment. The stage has been set for you to unbind, unfurl, and unravel all that bound you, all that has bound the generations prior to you, all the energy you hold in you now. You think you are healing ancestral lines. It is an energy that has been carried forward. You are all descendants of the Christ consciousness or whichever you attune to, it does not matter. It is all of the one infinite creator. You have all had the stage set for you, all of the fledglings. You have been building your courage. You have been preening your gentle new feathers as you have healed from these places and these parts and these pieces and these lands that you dare not speak of, that which is hidden in the dark will now come to the light, that which was flown through the subconscious of the energy and all illnesses, the stagnancy compounding of energy that you will think is from your DNA and you will think is from your generations that you have inherited. Fear not, my child. You have not inherited any genes of illnesses. You have inherited the energy of betrayal from years and thousands and millions upon millions of lifetimes compiled into a dark, stagnant energy. The Great Awakening is the awakening to these things. It is the unfurling and unbinding, the purging and the healing that happens. So when we come into alignment of their full power and their destinies, the fear that you feel is that of the devil energy, the fear that you are not enough. And yet there is also the push and pull from the divine of this hesitation and these two energies merging that feel like they are holding you in place will actually weave together to bring forth the most magnificent fire within you. This is not a fire that burns others. It is a fire that burns with the intrinsic wholeness of the self. It comes with peace and clarity. It is not the fire that brings its swords. It is the fire that lays down its swords and says, I am of the fire. I need not a sword for my tongue can unbind me. My heart can heal me and my ancestors raise me. And all that has been used and brought from the dark is literally used. These two components of the dark and light, my friends, are both working in tandem, whether you know it or not, or see it or not. They are working in tandem, pushing and pulling and mastering and pushing it all together to bring you into the greatest fruits of your ancestors. If you think about it like this, the grandmothers wish you attend this because all souls, all beings are birthed from the loins of the mother. Yes, it is the seed of the father. And yes, we honor the father. So too must we honor the mother for that seed is only birth to the loins of the mother. And that is her sacred role. Hi, priestesses. There are a number of channels for you coming up with bits and pieces and parts of this. You are being all asked to move to this state of the frequency that you came here with, that which you were born of, that which you came from, the one infinite creator divine. Why do you think you are here? You may look upon this and say, why am I in all these injustices? Why is there so much hate? And you may feel less than the aura, feeling like it has dismembered you along the way. And yet it is that dismemberment 
for your powerful frequency will always come back to you and maintain the light and the love and the joy and the alignment of the wholeness and sacredness of you. And that is why you were chosen for your frequency to be here. You are balance. We needed you where there was imbalance. You are justice. We needed you to be in the places where there was injustices so you could stand up. That is a shout out to a lot of masculines right now because that is the role you play. Some of us protect, some of us empower, some of us heal, some of us are healers of the mind, healers of the body, healers of the heart, healers of the soul, healers of the energy. All of us working together from this frequency right here. We needed your frequencies down in the depths of the imbalances, down in the depths of the dense, dark energy. This is a message for somebody who has had breast cancer or dealing with this. You did not inherit breast cancer as an inheritance through your family's ancestor DNA as a physical gene. We view it as a physical gene because we are in physical avatars in the physical body. This is the generation where we stand up and say, I will no longer inherit that gene. I will stand in my power. I will honor the sacredness of who I am. I will master my energy. I will walk in my shoes, creating my path. I will not tread the path of my ancestors. And yet, so too is it to be honored. It is because our ancestors tread the different stairs of the ascension path that allows us to create the new path here. History repeats itself. We are called in the Great Awakening for a complete evolution, viewing it from a different perspective, moving in a different frequency and elevated consciousness. For history is not intended to continue to repeat itself for millions more years. Why do you think the 26,000 year cycle of Mother Earth is shifting and changing at the same time as the Great Awakening of Consciousness? Those of you in service to others, you simply need to be and be in service to yourself. Whatever you choose that is integrity for the highest good of you will always be for the highest good of others. Do not be afraid to let other things go. This is your frequency. This is the place you have worked for. This is what every single person in your family has pushed you towards through the darkness, through the light, through the transcendence. How do you think you keep getting to stand back up? You the divine, my friends. You are the divine incarnate walking this plane. This is the generations where all the teachers of the new earth, which is teaching in a different modality to empower others in their own essence and their state of self, because the world does not change if we only have a select few in their power. It changes when the ones who are in their power say, here is some tools. Here is a mapping system that you can use to step into your own power. Because when more of us stand in our own power and recognize that we have direct connection, it ripples. We are the most powerful when each and every one of us are in our own power. It has always come down to being in your own power. Always. Everything you have encountered has been pushing you to be accountable for your own energy. If every single human being on this earth plane was accountable for their own energy with integrity and with values, that's the new earth, to be clear. Let's look at the triad. We have been operating in a triad, moving around it. Think of the dimensions. You can pick at it as spirit. You can put it into grief. You can put it into any circumstance. So let's put it into this. If we have the triad, the three points of the Holy Trinity of the self, and you have the dynamic of the person here who rescues and fixes things and does things for other people and they think they are helping. Sometimes they are not. They are playing into the triad of the cycle that we are trying to break. No longer should it be the three people, third party. This is not a third party aspect where one person's a victim, one person's a perpetrator, one person's a rescuer. Do you see how that dynamic can continue? Those who are rescuers, those who are helpers, those who are here in service, you are being asked to stand up and not serve from a place of holding a container and saying, here are the tools. I am giving you a safe container for you to stand up Get your feet under you and use these tools because that's when the victim no longer becomes the victim. They become empowered because the rescuer or the helper or the service has become empowered. And when these two become empowered, guess what? 
this dense energy up here that the cycle begins with and continues with no longer happens. We move it. It separates into the cube. The cube is a method of transcendence. You, again, I'm hearing that song. I am my mother's savage daughter. There is a reason that song is playing, my friends. Understand. Take, uh, I'm seeing the divine is literally picking up each and every one of you. We have viewed it from the world is wrong and things are bad and I'm here to serve others and I'm here to help others. And that is not a wrong perspective. There is just simply another piece and part that needs to unfurl for us to do this from a state of empowerment. Because technically, that's what all of us are doing and it may seem like there are those who are disempowering us but they're disempowering us to catapult us into our empowerment we are looking at it from this lens and the divine is literally picking us all up and placing us and saying i need you to look from this space from the eyes of the divine from the frequency that you came in here with instead of you continually coming down here to be in these circumstances that was before this is now. You have cultivated all the pieces you've needed. You have been gathering pieces and parts of yourself along the journey. There are no divine detours, my friends. There are no divine detours. Ava says, we think of it as a divine detour because we feel it should be linear. We feel I am looking towards this and focusing this. Not all of us are on that path. Those of you who have been wondering about divine detours, they are not detours. You were meant to go to those places because you are gathering pieces and parts and diamonds and pearls. They are part of your journey. It is not linear. It is a curving and winding path where the bone collector cleans the bones of the earthly debris that you have experienced through your consciousness of multiple ancestors before you. You are picking up for your mother and your grandfather and your sister and your brother. You have been picking up for your daughters and your sons. You have been picking up for the ancestors here millions of years ago. You are picking up for you that was here before walking incarnate on this earth. These are not divine detours. At the Esha'a, come into the truth of it. Maintain your frequency here of balance. Your, maintain your frequency of your peace. Maintain your frequency of your I am presence and power because as this great awakening and shift is already in play, it has been for months. It began months ago. The reckoning began. We all know this. I've said this multiple times. But sometimes we see it very, very clearly. Everything that we think is wrong on this earth plane is literally serving the purpose of the empowerment of every single human being. I do not care what culture you attune to. I do not care what belief system you attune to. Every single one of them has a poignant, pinpointed point where it is directing you to the empowerment and the wholeness of yourself, of recognizing the divinity of you within. And anything that tells you you are not, you are called to use that, understand it. It is the utilization in order to bring you to the embodiment of the wholeness of the self. That is what it has always been about, dear hearts. Some of you wonder why I am here so you can come to the wholeness of yourself so that the others, you've been holding the weight of all these energies down here. Do you understand how powerful you are? The time has come where that is no longer needed. There is enough of a shift on the earth plane for all of this to come full circle. It is a beautiful and profound understanding at the Isha'a from this lens of the divine. You will be called to let go and release all of these energies maintaining this state that is the greatest service to you you get to maintain that state and exude more powerfully so too is it the highest service to all the places that you have been and the people you have wanted to help because when you relinquish the cords snip 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 and you simply maintain your energy knowing that god has got every single one of us that the creator resides within each and every person giving them the choice the free will to raise their frequencies when they stand in their own i am presence 
They cannot stand in their own I am presence if you are constantly picking them up, constantly carrying their energy. It is only when you maintain your frequency that their energy suddenly realizes, I can stand on my own two feet and do my work as well. Do you see how it raises the frequency in that way? If you continue to come down here, you will always feel dimmed. You will never have enough energy. You will always feel distracted from your purpose and they will never cultivate the strength and the power that we all know is within them too because they have your energy to lean on that they don't require the need to do the work. Do you see the dynamics that play out? Do you understand how powerful each and every one of you are? You did not come here because you were meant to bear the burdens of others. You came here to be amidst the burdens, to understand them from multiple facets, energetically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. You came here to understand the darkness and the deeps of it. You did not come here to be understood. This is you. You did not come here to be understood by the dark dance of this 3D earth plane. You came here to help them understand by being you. You did not come here to fit into the box of what exists on this earth plane. You came here to say, hey, you don't have to be in that density. You did not come here to be seen by others in this darkness. They cannot see you. They cannot see you in the darkness, particularly when you go down into it with them. You came here to see them so that they could rise up out of the darkness. I do not know who needs this message, but I know it needs to be shared. It has been coming through for two whole weeks now through different people in different ways with different wording and different perspectives. Take nothing personally. Maintain your frequencies. There are those of you who came here not to be understood, not to fit in, not to be seen, and yet those will be your deepest wounds because they will be the things that you have experienced not being understood, not being seen, not understanding why you were holding such burdens of darkness. Do you understand why you have been there? It is not a punishment. You came here to hold a frequency, to move within it, to transmute things, to see them clearly, to understand the box that they have been put in. You did not come here to be understood by this denseness of the 3D earth plane. You came here to understand them, six dimensional beings and up. You can put it into any dimension you want to because anybody who accesses all the dimensions recognizes that all the dimensions actually feed and fuel all perspectives and brings full circle a complete unification of understanding. I also wish to highlight this. What is also true, there are victims who need somebody to step in and rescue them because if you don't, they will die. That is true. Do not negate from the fact that that is true. There are people who need to be rescued, who are truly victims, things that have happened to them, who need somebody to say, let me pull you over here. But when you get them over here, you need to empower them, help them to see who they are inside and find their strength within them. They cannot find their strength within them if they are constantly utilizing the strength of other people's energy outside of them. Why do you think the empath and the narcissist dynamic works so well? Why do you think we are on such tremendous codependency, regardless of whether it's dark and light, need somebody to grasp onto and the need for somebody to grasp onto them? These dynamics are part of the karmic wheel. Justice has been served. This is part of the karmic wheel. I talk about a splinter being in the midst of the law of cause and effect. I mean this in a multitude of different ways. Each person will attune to it differently. It may not align with your belief system. If I have a cause and I do something and here is an effect, and this is the effect of my cause, but somebody else steps in and said, here, let me fix that. And I'm gonna take the effects of whatever your cause was 
you never get the effect of your cause and you never learn the lesson. Do you see how it is in three as well? Do you see the splinter in the center of it? For some of you, that is the lesson of the cause and effect. That is the karmic lesson. In the great awakening, we are unveiling what is hidden to us, what we have not revealed within our deepest, darkest parts of us. Whether you attune to that as people externally outside of you, because for some of you, that's what it is. It's distortions outside of you. For others of you, it's distortions within you. There's another set of you that there are, there are distortions within you that are actually not your distortions. There are other people's distortions that you have taken within you. There's many different dynamics this can play out in. And when I say something's important, I know I say that a lot. So here's a prime example. In my past, I could say something that it was such great relevance and answered every question that they had. And they would dismiss it and deny it, viewing me as unimportant despite the fact that what I said was the answer to everything they had asked. And it's not because I'm not important. It's because they could not see. It's because they were down here on this level and could not receive it. It was easier for them to continue to make me feel small and use my energy. And it was easier for me at the time, or perhaps I did not see that I was staying small so that other people could use my energy so they could feel like they lifted up, but they never really were lifting up because they could never maintain it because they hadn't done the work because my energy was supporting them. The moment I release that, they have no choice but to see that they have no, nothing to stand on. Not a leg to stand on is what I am hearing. Not a leg to stand on. But here's why this tower moment is so beautiful in the macro. Here is why the divine uses every darn last piece of darkness, every trauma and every wound. It is never to say that you chose to be wounded. It is never to make you feel less than. It's so that you can suddenly begin to realize as the towers and mountains crumble that you have a power within you that is so... There is a power within each and every one of you that is the power of the divine. That's why we ask you to seek within. There are those of you who know you have been doing a thankless job of being down here. Dear hearts, it is time for you to maintain your frequency and allow all things, all others, that is not at that frequency to fall away. No one gets left behind. What that truly means is when you stand in your power, illuminating from this state, no longer being the power source of others, but truly and solely your own power, these down here, those in the dense frequencies, as the towers fall, as the mountains crumble, so too will they start to rise, begin to see, begin to stand in their power and see that they too have that power of the divine within them. This is how we do it. We are working from the inside out. This transmission, channel, teaching, and understanding is complete. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Know that this will come in layers. Know that some of you will watch this video and understand completely and unequivocally. This has always been what you have been working towards. Mission complete. There will be those of you who will see the pieces and parts of you where you have held others up, where you have disempowered yourself. This is not about shame, ever. This is about you seeing clearly the power that resides within you. Because as we are plucked from this perspective and placed into this one, we begin to do anew. Sons and daughters, kings and queens of the one infinite creator, of the divine I am source and empowerment.
each and every one of us is the divine incarnate. And may this message be received with the absolute light, love, compassion, and clarity unbound from all spells, spells we have cast upon ourselves, spells that have been cast upon others. May all those be unbound and may all souls at the Ka'ash Ochra receive this clearly. Thank you so much for listening to this channel. I honor each and every one of you from the tips of my fingers to the tips of my toes, from the depths of all the souls and the ancestors in the room and the divine sprinkling stardust. If you like this channel and if it resonated, please share this in the comments. Please share this video. Please feel the fire of the divine that burns within you, the wholeness of everything that you are. I will link that song in the video description box below. This activation is complete. Until next time, beautiful souls.